Hi, my name is Abdul Rashid Shireh. I'm here at Mayo Clinic at the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Today I will discuss about our paper which entitled Viral Hepatitis Among Somali Immigrants in Minnesota, Association of Hepatitis C with Hepatocellular Carcinoma or Liver Cancer. The article will appear in the January 2012 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. For, for this study, we look at the Somali population in terms of hepatitis B and hepatitis C because we have huge Somali contingents in the state of Minnesota. And in fact, since the 1990s, the, the people from the sub-Saharan Africa, including Somalis, migrated to the U.S. in large numbers. In large numbers. Many of them actually ended up here in this state of Minnesota. And over the last few years, since 2005, that I have been here at the Mayo Clinic, I came across a number of Somali people with end stage of liver disease, for instance, cirrhosis and liver cancer. And when I look at the literature and look at specifically what we know about hepatitis B and hepatitis C in this community, we did find very few articles. And many of these articles are indeed very old. They were published in late 1980s or early 1990s. And also we know that many have migrated to either Europe or North America. And we did actually find many articles, or maybe we did find very few articles published in the Somali diaspora in Europe and North America. So we thought it would be a very good idea to actually look at the medical records here at Mayo and actually see how many of the Somali people who came to Mayo Clinic, for instance, we look at from 1996 all the way to 2009, and we specifically look at three markers, two for hepatitis B and one for hepatitis C. We look at how many who came to Mayo within that time frame have been tested for these markers, and we use it control group from Olmsted County, which is the area where the city of Rochester is located. When we compared the two populations after adjusting their age, for hepatitis B service antigen marker, we did find tenfold difference between Somalis and non-Somalis. And hepatitis C service antigen positivity is the one that indicates current and persistent uh, chronic hepatitis B infection. We also look at uh, the core antibody, and that is the one that tells us prior exposure to hepatitis B, and we did find five-fold difference between Somalis and non-Somalis. And finally, we look at uh, the antibody against hepatitis C between the two groups, and we did find three-fold difference between Somalis and non-Somalis. Of course, some of these markers cannot differentiate between past infection and current infection. So for in the case of the antibody against hepatitis C, we look at those who are positive for that marker, how many of them actually did have tests for hepatitis C RNA, because that's the one that tells us whether the virus is still there and, and whether the infection is still uh, active. And we did find about 90, 92 or 93% of the, of the people from both groups, Somalis and non-Somalis, indeed ha, you know, were positive for hepatitis C RNA, which indicates active chronic hepatitis C infection. We then went on and specifically looked at those from the Somali background whom we looked at within that time frame from July 1996 all the way to October 31st in 2009 how many of them have developed a liver cancer? And we did find 30 people who developed a liver cancer. When we look at how many of them had hepatitis B and how many of them had hepatitis C, and very interestingly, we, we, we did find that 75% or 76% of the Somali people who developed liver cancer indeed were positive for hepatitis C, which probably indicated that their liver cancer was due to hepatitis C infection. 
What we also found when we compared the different genotypes of hepatitis C, of course both hepatitis B and hepatitis C have different genotypes. We specifically looked at the genotypes of hepatitis C and we compared between Somalis and non-Somalis. And what we did find was that Somalis, the most common genotype of, of hepatitis C was genotype 4, while in non-Somalis the most common genotype was genotype 1. So that answered it that we expected to see some differences in terms of genotypes of hepatitis C between the two groups. Also what we did, we looked at whether the Somali people whom we found to have developed liver cancer were under surveillance program. And what surprised us was that very few of them were in any surveillance program. And we did find that about 45% of these people, of the 30 people who developed liver cancer, have only learned that they had hepatitis C at the time they were actually going through for assessment for liver cancer. And that's really uh, something we need to, to address. So in, 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 in conclusion and in terms of clinical relevance, what we need to do as of now, if we come across at the clinic someone from the Somali background, we have to suspect that there is a chance that they may either have hepatitis B or hepatitis C. Of course we know that many of these people when they migrate to the nation, they, as, as refugees coming from a refugee campus, for instance in Kenya or Ethiopia, they actually get screened when they come to the U.S. only for hepatitis B but not for hepatitis C. So since our study showed that many of the Somali people indeed have both hepatitis B and hepatitis C chronic infections, but we only screen for hepatitis B, it will be really important as of now when we come across someone from the Somali background at the clinic to also screen hepatitis C. Also, we need to do more research as of now so that we can understand more about the different genotypes of hepatitis B and hepatitis C which are common in the Somali population. We can also study the different viral mutations that occur in, in, in these viruses, B and C, in the Somali population. And eventually we need to also study the host factors, host genetic factors and host immunologic factors. Of course, all of these can generate further in information that would be useful in future to actually help physicians to actually better diagnose and better treat the Somali people. And also, finally, what we need is to come up with intervention programs. For instance, we have to screen most of the Somali people who have not been screened for, he for either hepatitis B or hepatitis C. We know, of course, if they are negative for hepatitis B, there is a vaccination for hepatitis B, so they can easily qualify for that you know, vaccination, and they can be vaccinated against hepatitis B. Unfortunately, there is no vaccination for hepatitis C, but of course it would be important to screen for both viruses and if they are positive for, for either one or both, there are treatments available. So they can be recommended to actually have treatments. And it, it, the treatments, for instance, for hepatitis C, it may or may not work in according to the, to the, to the genotype of the hepatitis C. And of course it would be interesting to see, since we have seen genotype 4, as the most common in the Somali population, whether the current drugs against hepatitis C would indeed work in that group with that particular genotype of hepatitis C. But all in all, if we get proper screening for both hepatitis B and C, vaccination for hepatitis B, proper treatment for both B and C, and surveillance for those who are positive for both infections and didn't do well in terms of treatments, then eventually we can actually reduce the incidence of liver cancer in this community and that would be something really very important. Thank you. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. 
If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.